Hi guys and welcome to another installment of Nathan's Beer Reviews. Something different for you guys today. Uh, we're doing my first ever unboxing video. Um, I'm 27 today, it's my birthday, the 13th of December. Um, and yeah, first ever unboxing video. Got a $50 gift voucher from the in-laws. Um, so I thought I'd go down the road and see what I could pick up. And I found this. The Gage Road Brewing Company Craft Beer Mix Container. Um, it's an eight pack of four beers, so you get two in two each of uh, their four main of Gage Road's um, main main beers that they brew. Um, you don't see a lot of Gage Road stuff here around Sydney. Um, not too many pubs um, stock it. I've seen a couple of pubs with it on tap, but not too many, because um, I've never actually had it before. Um, but if I do enjoy these, I'm more than likely to choose it next time I see it on tap at a pub. Um, they're a small craft brewery out of Fremantle, which is a town in Western Australia, just south of Perth. Um, a little bit about the brewery they tell you on the pack here. Um, Gage Roads is a strip of ocean that separates Rottnest Island and Fremantle in Western Australia. It is home to surfers and swimmers, the seagulls and sharks, ships and sailors, and it's a place where you can relax, escape, explore or seek out adventure. We saw a lot of ourselves in that little spot, and that's why we named our brewery after it. Um, so yeah, so like I said, it comes in this uh, eight pack. Um, and I also picked up six six singles, um, I think I mentioned. A North American style lager, um, two Australian style pale ales, a, two Irish stouts and an Australian dark ale. So um, that came to a tick over $50 for me. So I'll, I'll, do, I'll add that as part of the unboxing of this video. But enough rambling. Let's see what's in this craft beer box. Uh, it's a pretty durable little box actually. I've seen some of these boxes. So the first beer that we're going to pull out from left to right I suppose is their Little Dove New World Pale Ale. A 6.2% alcohol by volume New World Style Pale Ale. Um, yeah, we set out to explore the new world with this beer, just like the 16th century Dutch ship of the same name. The result is a pale ale crafted to showcase the tropical fruit character that new world hops are famous for. There's a boatload of aroma and flavour with melon, grapefruit and guava, balanced by rich caramel malt and a bitterness that stays hidden until the end. Um, it has four malts, four hops and 60 kilos of dry hop. I think, I think that's how it's meant to be read. If it wants to clear up for me, but it's not going to. And I see, yeah, so 6.2%, so it's a little stronger than your average pale ale here in Australia. So that looks kind of cool. The next beer in their selection is their Atomic Pale Ale. A 4.7% alcohol by volume pale ale. Australian style, no, American style pale ale. There was no better place for a 1940s secret submariner to get his land legs back than Dockside in Fremantle. A tribute to those hut heady times, this American style pale ale is dry hopped with four US hops and bottled unfiltered and bottled unfiltered for flavour and refreshment. So yeah. I'm um, I'm actually a big fan of American style pale ales, like West Coast, you know, Californian style. Um Pale ales, I, I do, I do prefer them more than IPAs per se. Um, speaking of Indian pale ales, their Sleeping Giant IPA is next in line, coming in at five point four alcohol uh, percent alcohol by volume. Um, a tribute to the beer that once quenched the thirst of parched col colonials at Admiral Gage's East India Station. This English IPA is malt driven with slightly spicy aroma, lingering bitterness, and we bottle it unfiltered for flavour and freshness. Sleeping Giant IPA. 
The next, the final beer in this this box is the one beer I have seen in pubs um, around that I haven't actually gotten around to drinking, and it's probably the the beer that suits the the, the temperature that we're in today. We're currently uh, middle of December, December thirteenth, so we're well into summer at the moment, and it's their single fin summer ale coming in at four point five percent alcohol by volume. More refreshing than a face full of the Frio Doctor, we brew this beer with sun-drenched summer days in mind. Light-bodied and chock-full of aromatic galaxy enigma hops. Like all of our beers, it's unfiltered for flavour and refreshness. And freshness, not refreshness. So yeah, the, the single fin summer ale. Summer ales are huge here in Australia at the moment. Um, it sort of suits the climate that we're in, you know, really hot, really humid sort of, sort of weather, so... Um, yeah, so it's four really awesome beers there for me to try over the next week or two weeks or however long it takes me to get through them. Uh, we're coming into the Christmas period now, so it'll be good to, to try some new different beers. Um, something to look forward to is I'm actually working all through the Christmas period, including on Christmas and Boxing Day. So we'll just pop those back in the box and then I'll show you the, the six singles I picked up uh, with my remaining... 20 odd dollars um, I don't know if I told you that eight pack that mix eight pack cost me $27 so the first beer I found in the fridge which I've never actually seen before um, up until recently here in Australia is something a little out of left field it is Molson's Canadian lager beer um, Flat 5% alcohol by volume in this 355 milliliter bottle. It is so humid here in Sydney today. This bottle is sweating like no tomorrow. I only took it out of the fridge like 10 minutes ago. So, and it is sweating like no tomorrow. Like the label is basically peeling off by itself. Um, I had no idea this beer was even a thing until I saw it in Dan Murphy's about a month ago. And I really didn't know what to make of it. Um, it's imported into Australia by Coca-Cola Amateur. Um, Coca-Cola Amatil about five or six years ago got the brewing rights to um, a couple of Molson Coors' beers, which is what one of these are. Um, they also got Coors, uh, which is actually Coors Light, but we can't market it as Coors Light in Australia because light beer in Australia and light beer in America are two completely different things. And advertising it as a light beer when you're selling it at four and a half, I think, percent alcohol by volume um, would confuse a lot of people over here. So yeah, imported into Australia by Coca-Cola Amatil. Really, really handy as well. They've put silver writing on a white label um, that you can't actually read because it's also sweating. Um, yeah, Coca-Cola Amatil Australia, North Mead. It's also imported into New Zealand by Coca-Cola Amatil. Um, from Molson Coors in Canada. Brewed by Molson Coors Canada in Montreal, Quebec. Union made. So does that mean it's made by the unions or is that like the American Union, you know, Civil War sort of thing? Anyway, so yeah, that, that, that could be interesting. Um, interesting American style adjunct lager, I'm assuming it's going to taste like. Um, I've only done one American style adjunct lager, Budweiser, on this channel and it wasn't even American Budweiser, it was UK Budweiser. The next beer, um, I literally saw this in the fridge at BWS and I thought it looks completely different. Never seen it before. Definitely never tried it before. Um, it is the Stockade Brewing Company's Chop Shop Pale Ale. Really cool label there uh, of an old school American car and a, a dude working on the front right wheel by the looks of things. 4.7% um, alcohol by volume. Hop driven uh, with Fuggles, Cascade hops, Columbus hops, Simcoe hops, and Citra hops. So it's five different hops, four different malts Pilsen malts, Munich malts, Carafa malts, Carafa special malts, coming in at 28 IBUs. And apparently it pairs well with beef, pork, barbecue meats, and burgers. This label is also going to peel off soon. It's sweating like no tomorrow. Produced and bottled in Australia by Stockade Brewing Company, 41 Topham Road, Smeaton Grange. Huh, 
Smeaton Grange. Smeaton Grange is a suburb here in Sydney, which is probably about a 20 minute drive from my house. So this is a technically a very local brewery. I live in Sydney's southwestern suburbs in between Liverpool and Campbelltown. Um, so yeah, it looks like the brewery is literally just down the road. So maybe that's why the local BWS is selling it. So that one will, I'll be definitely very keen to try. Um, the next four beers uh, should be very well well known to, to most viewers. Um, Australian viewers will recognise this one. It is Tui's Old Dark Ale. 4.4% alcohol by volume, 375 millilitres. A refreshing dark ale of subtle notes of chocolate and roasted coffee. This robustly flavoured Tui's Old Dark Ale is surprisingly refreshing. What may also surprise you that it contains no additives or preservatives and is on average 99.9% .9 sugar free because we're all looking after our weight. Um, I've noticed all Tui's beers, uh, anything that is now brewed by Tui's or Lion or Han, anything that is owned by Kirin Brewery is now 99% sugar, percent sugar free. Um, a few weeks ago I reviewed the, not Little Creatures, um, White Rabbit Dark Ale, which is owned by Lion. Um, and that is also 99.9% .9 sugar free. Best enjoyed in a chilled glass. So. Funnily enough, I think I think that's what American light beers are. You know, they're sugar-free, low in carbs, low in calories. So technically, this is a American-style light dark ale. Um, yeah, really, really well-known dark ale here in Sydney, um, especially in Sydney, New South Wales. Um, very old-school beer. It's got a newer label on it than they've redesigned the label in the last few years. Probably just to you know spruce up the the product a bit, but I'm pretty sure it's the exact same beer. Um, probably was once upon a time slightly higher ABV, but 4.4% not terrible for a dark ale. Um, I haven't had Tui's Old in a very very long time. Um, the last time I had it was when I was about 18, 19, before I started getting into dark ales. Um, yeah, and I, I don't remember liking it back then, but my palate has certainly changed in the last five, six years since since then. Uh, moving on, um, another Australian beer, uh, this time an Australian pale ale. Uh, should, again, should be very well known to Australian uh, pale ale enthusiasts. It's Little Creatures Pale Ale, a 5.2% alcohol by volume American style pale ale. Uh, this is what really kicked off the, the the craft beer scene here in Australia, um, Little Creatures. They did eventually sell to Lion. Um, uh, there we go again. This beer is preservative free, 99.9% .9 sugar free. <laughs> pale ale, sugar free pale ale. Um, so yeah, brewed by the Little Creatures Brewery in Western Australia, uh, under license for Lion. Hopped with Cascade and Chinook Hop. Cones and pasteurized and live bottle conditioned. Our parallel has a unique hoppy, balanced, and refreshing flavors. Um, yeah, I've had this tons of times. It is one of my favorite Aussie style parallel, so I'll definitely enjoy reviewing that one for you guys. And the last two beers I'm going to pull out for you today come from Ireland. Um, one of the first beers I think in the top first five I did was Guinness Ale, its direct competitor, even though it's brewed by the same company. Kilkenny Irish Ale, original draft brewed in Ireland. Um, yeah, Kilkenny Ale brewed by Diageo, um, just as well known as Guinness. Maybe not quite as famous, but it's definitely very well known. Uh, brewed in Ireland by Diageo. St. James's Gate, Dublin, and Ireland imported into Australia by Lion Beer. Uh, because it's not owned by Lion, it is not 99% sugar free. It is just beer. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Kilkenny. Cool, Gonna have a real fun enjoying that one. It also is in the nitrogen widget can, so I enjoy the nitrogen beers quite a lot. And of course, you know, we can't talk Guinness without, of course, Guinness Extra Stout. Uh, reviewed Guinness Draft, Guinness Extra Stout. 
what more can be said. Um, Brood, of course, is established since 1759, St. James's Gate, Dublin, Arthur Guinness. Uh, oh, okay, so no, this one is actually beer brewed and bottled in Australia. Huh. There we go, I didn't know that. Beer brewed and bottled in Australia under license of Diageo Australia by Lion. There we go. So this is an Australian Guinness. Um, whether it tastes different to the one that is brewed in, in Ireland, I'm not sure. But yeah, the Guinness Extra Stout. Uh, been keen to try this one for a while. Again, I had it a long time ago. I didn't like it, but my palate has changed. Um, so these beers, the Guinness Extra Stout, the Little Creatures Pale Ale, uh, and the Kilkenny and the two is old, were all $3, uh, $3 a bottle, not $3 for all four, which would have been a better deal, I suppose, but $3 a bottle, um, you would have thought they were running out of date, but they're not, uh, the two is, uh, best before is March next year, the Guinness is September next year, um, the Kilkenny is June next year, and the little creatures are August next year. So all all those four beers all expire well into next year, 2019. So I'm not entirely sure why BWS were knocking the price off. Maybe they're just not selling them. Um, but yeah, so that's this unboxing video, guys. Um, some awesome beers to try for you guys. Some awesome experiences to be had over the next however long it takes me to drink these. Um, I look forward to experiencing them with you, and I hope you look forward to uh, experience them with me, I suppose. So, cheers for watching, guys. If you managed all 17 minutes of this video, big thumbs up to you. Um, click like, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, if there's a beer that you would like me to review, um, please let me know down in the comment section, uh, or send me a personal message, and I'll do my best to acquire um, said beer. We do get a decent range here in Australia of international beers if you're from overseas but if not that is what the world wide web is for um so yeah again cheers guys um I'm gonna get cracking into a couple of these beers just to uh review them for you and I'll see you in the next review cheers